and the Wombles and today we are going to review the 2020 CrossFit Games. We've just seen the completion yesterday of the Games um, and what can I say about it? What a fantastic event. If you didn't watch it, get on YouTube. Um, also, probably don't watch the rest of the video because I'm about to spoil who wins it. Although, if you went into the 2020 CrossFit Games not knowing who was going to win it before the end of it, I think you were a bit... Uh, either you're new to CrossFit, and of course anyone can win it, but mm, let, let's be honest, it's it was really a one-horse race the entire way through. And even before the games had even started, in the first part of qualifying for the 2020 games, there was only one guy that anyone thought was going to finish top of the leaderboard and win the overall event anyway. So, you know, it's... It was a one horse race, but wasn't that horse an absolute beauty? That horse has run its own race the entire way through. And 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 there was also the same horse on the women's side. And it was incredible. Absolutely incredible to watch. An annihilation of of, of professional athletes. Like it's it's hard as an amateur or someone that enjoys just doing a, a crossfit workout to even think uh, the reason why i don't consider myself a a crossfit person is because that level just to annihilate other people who are meant to be equal to you is just astounding and so of course let's get on with the news show for the 2020 games here we go should we start with the main thing should we should we just get it off our chest um if you want to know who won the crossfit games it was of course matt fraser and uh, on the male side and tia claire toomey on the women's side you know the pair trained together they were the out and out best athletes in the competition they were phenomenal the entire weekend Matt won 13 out of 15 events. He finished second in the other two that he didn't win. Out of the other five competitors, he finished second. Like, the guy is stupid. And I feared this may happen with this CrossFit Games. Well, not feared. I was, you know, it's always nice to watch Matt Fraser compete. He always goes and crushes it. He, you, you know that something's coming. And even when someone else is winning, you, you have that kind of feeling that, Oh, where's Matt? Oh, this could... Matt could s s take it here from whoever's leading the race. And we saw over this three-day weekend, really, it started on Friday, it finished on Sunday evening. It was an absolute Matt Fraser... Um, how do you... What do you call it? An absolute Matt Fraser show. He annihilated the rest of the field to win 13 events. Just to give you some idea... I will show that Matt Fraser finished with a total of 1,150 points. Second place, who I haven't gone to yet, a very, very good athlete, you know, been around for a while now, a little bit. He's been to a CrossFit Games before. Second place, finished 605 points. Like, what? How, how have you let this guy and this is the thing so did we find the fittest and i think that's the question that everyone asks when we have a crossfit games is do we find the fittest athlete and for me matt fraser if you put him against any of the top athletes in the world yes i think you can categorically say the crossfit games once again found the fittest crossfit athlete in the world um and you can't really take it away from him. Uh, he annihilated the field on 13 out of 15 events. And yes, some of them were close. Um, the only ones that he lost out on was the swim event. Uh, he kept, finished second in that one. And the total uh, the total weight lifted, which was a back squat, a shoulder press, and a deadlift. And he lost by seven pounds. He lost by seven pounds to Jeffrey Adler. And Adler, in fairness to him, in that event, like, on the commentary, I knew coming into it, Adler had a re has really good lifting ability. And on the commentary, they were like, oh, well, 
you know, Adler should be pushing himself, pushing himself. But he obviously had a game plan that he knew his deadlift was ridiculous. And he PB'd three times in that event. He PB'd his shoulder press, his back squat, and, and the deadlift. So for him just to finish second in that, unbelievable. Matt Fraser was an absolute beast. And that's the only way to describe him. On the women's side, of course, we had Tia Claire Toomey, Matt's training partner, and a unbelievable, again, performance from her. It seems with Tia and Matt, if you ask them to do anything, they are going to win at whatever you ask, especially in the CrossFit community. They are serial champions. Matt Fraser has now won the CrossFit Games five different times, and Tia Claire Toomey has won it four different times. Both of them have won it consecutively. Ridiculous. And neither one of them has commit. Uh, neither one of them has gone to a CrossFit Games and finished outside of second. Uh, Matt finished second back in 2015 to Ben Smith and 2014 he finished second to Rich, the, the goat that is Rich Froning. Tia Claire Toomey finished second in 2015 behind Katrin David's daughter and second uh, in 2016 behind David's daughter but then in 2017 went on to win everything. Just absolute phenomenal performances. And that bit at the end where they were doing Atalanta and they came across the line together, beautiful to watch unbelievable kind of reminded me like they were both uh, you always see on instagram like they've got a pitch like you've got tia's famous pictures and matt's famous pictures kind of reminded me that they might want someone to put it up in their gym somewhere just a nice picture of them crossing the line together they put so much work in um outside of the games that it was just that was just a lovely thing to see like them do they took the same breaks the same rest did the same reps and really, Matt won that on the male side as well. So Tia beat all the men. In that event, Kerry Pierce. Unbelievable. We saw her in Mary in 2019. The Atalanta was Murph mixed with Mary movements. With just the mile uh, at the start and the finish, just like Murph. And it was two hero wads combined. It was amazing. It was brutal i actually felt really sorry for Haley adams in the entire event because you could just see her hands rip and Haley was hanging on to that third position um and needed to make sure that kerry pierce didn't actually finish two spots ahead of her and she just finished behind uh she finished fourth in that event leading to her to miss out on a podium position now getting on to the rest of the field we've banged on about tia and matt and Tia, just phenomenal. Matt, just phenomenal. But we're going to move on to the rest of the field. Now, picking up second place at the CrossFit Games in 2020, it was actually Samuel Quant. Now, Samuel Quant wasn't talked about as a big top dog coming into even the first stage. No one really looked at him. No one, no one paid any attention to him. And he snuck his way into that top five. He then snuck his way into, into that top, after sneaking it into that top five, He's then only gone and pulled it out of the bag and got second. And I was really impressed with his performance in the swim because Matt Fraser's swimming ability has really improved over the last few years. And you look at the field and you you look at people like Noah Olsen and you think, oh, this could be a great event for Noah. Uh, swim, he loves a swim. Just a fantastic event for him. Then you look at, um, you look at the sprint event. Matt beat Samuel Quamp by something ridiculous of a second. Samuel Quad's a big guy, and that's 100 meter sled push, 100 meter back. Samuel Quad, if it would have gone on for another two, three yards, probably would have had Matt Fraser on that event, because Matt's legs at the last 10 meters were really tired, like they were gunning for it. And Samuel Quad, I think he achieved in the last in the last day. He finished second on the he finished first on the swim event, second on the sprint, and then got fourth in. Uh, he finished fifth in the men's competition at, on Atalanta, and on the balance of it, consistent, 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 and that's what got him to second place. Now, second on the women's side. We saw the return of Katrin Davis-Norton. Now, Katrin Davis-Norton has had a really tricky 2020 season. 
She suffered a lot with a back injury, which has kept her out of competing a lot in sanctionals and so forth. And she hasn't been able to lift as much. And she's been going through rehab, rehabilitation on her back. She's actually suffered a disc problem in her back, which for lifting and other things like that must be absolute agony for someone that lifts heavy um, and stuff like that. So she finished second on the women's side and what was phenomenal to see she didn't get off again Katrin Davis still didn't get off to the best start of the weekend How, especially in the first event she finished fourth just uh, just ahead of Brooke Wells and she was fifth for a long time but made up some ground towards the end as Wells started to fade in the final round However, what was really impressive, and I think you saw the turning point for Katrin Davis' daughter, and I would have predicted that she'd end up finishing on the podium in the surprise event at the end of day one. That trail run of three miles with that sneaky bit at the end from Dave Castro, which was the best thing that I have seen at CrossFit Games. Like, normally, like, you watch it and, you know... It's the fact that it was just sprung on them. No, we didn't even know watching, and the athletes didn't know, but it, when Matt Fraser's finished, he's just crouching down, and he's just sold out for the last 250, 250 metres to be Justin Medeiros. And then Dave Castro goes, oh yeah, just uh, turn around, do it again, do it again the other way. If someone tells me that, I'm just going, <sighs> like, you've just absolutely burned yourself to try and finish first he finishes first like matt always does and then he crouches down takes it like oh thank god it's over and then nope turn around do it backwards you know we want to see what you're rated that was the best thing that i've seen at crossfit games i think it's the best thing this year i know people will talk about atalanta being an amazing workout that workout because of the surprise and how it went down and how not necessarily for the other athletes so like like the people that finish were finishing third and fourth and fifth at the turnaround stage but the top two justin Medeiros and matt fraser battling it out for the top one and two and getting the absolute shock of their lives getting told to turn around and go back to the start unbelievable but yeah katrin davis door at that moment katrin won that event like the trail run Tia Claire Toomey, you can say that she sort of sold out to win the first three miles, which is what which is what the first part of the uh, Event 5 was, was a three-mile trail run, which is what everyone thought it was going to be, but ended up being a turnaround and to do the entire thing in reverse. Unbelievable. And she really was the sled dog. She, she didn't moan. She got right to work, turned around, and just went. Just went. But yeah, Katrin Davis really did pull out the stops this weekend. I felt she looked a lot better. And one of the things was you can tell that she's been a champion before. She's been in high pressure situations. She also knows her body better than anyone. And a few times you thought, uh, for the first event especially, you thought, is this the Katrin we're going to see all weekend? Like, is she fit enough and her body's going to hold up well enough to finish? the events in some respects like some of them but she took her time and that is what you you see a champion you see someone that's won the games before and that's experience that's experience she knew she wasn't going to blow herself out in the first event she took her time and she got fourth in that event and she kept chipping away and chipping away and chipping away and it was fantastic to see because she's ended up second on the female side now moving on to third place now third place was rookie of the year on the male side was justin Medeiros unbelievable performance he pushed matt fraser as as much as anyone pushed him and i think he pushed him the most this weekend people will talk about samuel kwan maybe in a couple of events pushing him like the swim and the run and the sprint event but justin Medeiros really pushed tried to push the pace on a lot of stuff like he was out ahead the the three mile trail run kept on fraser's toes back in 2016 we saw the event of the trail run which was it was seven kilometers trail run and matt fraser won that event too but during that event you had everyone going at the same time like you did this one however you had josh bridges and matt fraser at the front matt fraser took off up a hill and josh bridges let him go and didn't push him and thought that matt would slow down and he didn't whereas we didn't see that from Medeiros. Medeiros was like it was it was a rookie's performance because although he didn't have a lot in the tank at the end of the six mile race 
like we haven't seen anyone push Matt Fraser that much on an event. Um, and, you know, it was great to see. He went out there with that rookie mentality of, oh, well, I could only be here once. I'm going to take as many swings at the at the champ as I can. You know, unbelievable, unbelievable. He looks a real prospect for the future. Upper body, maybe, maybe his lifts, but that'll come with time. The guy's 21 years old. He's not fully fledged. It's his rookie year in the sport, uh, at the CrossFit Games, not in the sport. Um, but yeah, he was fantastic this weekend. Real pleasure to watch. Winning third place at the CrossFit Games on the women's side, we had Kerry Pierce. Now, Kerry Pierce, I tipped to actually qualify for the final stage, um, before the final stage, just based off of the gymnastics. She is a phenomenal gymnast, as in body weight movements. And again, we saw that with the final event, where when I think everyone's favourite going into that final event, seeing though Kerry Pierce had destroyed the men's and women's field at the 2019 games when they were doing Mary, like when she took to the floor, I I was pretty much pretty sure that she was in with a shout of winning that event and she just did just that and at the start of the event people were like oh she's gone out a bit hot she was the first to come back in um oh she was second to come back in behind Haley Adams by about 15 yards but kept near the front and she led from the front she banged out those handstand push-ups again like nobody's business just up down up down 100 done in no time moved on to the 200 pistols got them finished took her time on the pull-ups but got them smashed out and one thing i was really impressed of the determination in her eyes to get herself in that last mile like she wasn't letting anyone overtake her she set off at a pace that was just ridiculous after doing that amount of work and returned the same pace didn't slow down ran for her life and she deserved after the entirety of the events she deserved third place uh, on the women's field and congratulations to Kerry Pierce on that one fourth place we had fourth place we had Noah Olsen uh, on the men's side and we had unfortunately Hayley Adams on the women's side I felt really sorry for Hayley Adams she's only 19 years old it's her second time to the CrossFit Games and I as, as a fan really wanted Hayley Adams to do well because Hayley Adams has something that not a lot of people can say they've got and that's you know grit determination phenomenal young athlete she's she, and they said it on the commentary she'll be around for years to come imagine Tia Claire Toomey is 27 years old She's 27. Haley is 19. So as much as Haley should be disappointed that she didn't make the podium and you could see it in the face at her face at the end of Atalanta, she was gutted. And that's how everyone would feel if they've just missed out on a podium position. She was absolutely gutted. There was tears in her eyes and and in that final event she you could see the blood from the rips in her hands from doing all the pull-ups. Um it it was gut-wrenching a bit at the end because you really wanted her to get on the podium but just missed out and it's and it's credit to Kerry Pierce for going out and setting that pace in the final event and not making it not making it um almost not making it a contest whether she would finish first in the event or whether she'd whether she would make the podium because she went out there and she made it hers so fair play to Kerry Pierce but it was gut-wrenching to see Hayley Adams in that sort of fourth place just missed out on it didn't unbelievable the entire weekend really really went for it this weekend and Aromas is always going to be a strong place for a person like Hayley Adams um with her running background and she's a phenomenal runner and and CrossFit Mayhem obviously she trains with Rich Froning, Tasia Pasevich, China Cho. She's had a lot of experience around game athletes. And I think it showed this weekend. She's still got a little bit of that naivety because she is that young and that fresh still into the sport. Like, this is only her second year. And if we think, what, it took Tia two years to win her first CrossFit Championship. She has nothing to fear. I'm sure that she'll be back 
bigger, better next year. She's going to be phenomenal for years to come. On the men's side, we had Noah Olsen. Now, Olsen, for me, I don't want to say he had a bad games because fourth place, and remember, this is fourth place out of 30 if you think about it because they still had to qualify through the first event, uh, first like qualifying stage. But I felt like Olsen kind of pushed too early and kind of regressed because we saw such control out of Noah Olsen last last year at the CrossFit Games. We saw him win Mary. We saw him battle it out with Matt Fraser for the top spot and just miss out. Like he pushed Fraser last year unbelievably well. And he was he would probably say he was in the best form of his lifetime. And this year it felt a little bit different. Like you saw you saw his mistakes creeping back in where he'd go out really hot and then sort of die getting towards the end um and but i won't take something away from him the guy put everything out there um in that final event he really went for broke and that's what he had to do and that's what he did and he ended up finishing second behind matt fraser which again like the guy is a goat of the crossfit he's a goat like he is a goat he's one of the greatest of all time so the guy is a goat and you know, you finished second, but it wasn't quite enough to knock jo uh, Justin Medeiros off of uh, the third place slot and get himself back onto the podium. But yeah, I just feel like with Noah, it was a bit, there was mistakes creeping in where he'd either blow up too early or go out too hot and try and run the race from the front and maybe should conserve his energy a bit more and then, and then go again. Um, so that was, it was sad. It was like, he's an experienced athlete and obviously he'll, he'll know best. And I'm just, I'm just like one of you guys, I'm just a spectator. I just like CrossFit and I just talk about it. And obviously if he felt, if he feels in himself that he can run the race from the front, he probably can. However, this weekend I felt that in some aspects, like last year we saw a lot more controlled tactical Noah Olsen. Whereas this year I didn't feel like we did as much, um, but it was still a phenomenal performance from Noah this weekend. And fourth place is not nothing to be sneezed at. You're the fourth fittest in the world. Like, it, it can't really get any worse. Um, moving on to finally the fifth place. And fifth place on the men's side was Jeffrey Adler. And Adler, I think what was nice to see about Adler is there's a little bit of commentary where Matt just won the hill sprint event or this uh the sack on the back in the hill sprint and adler goes oh, i just want anyone like out of us four to beat him now that shows grit and determination but yeah he actually beat matt in the crossfit total event and and you cannot say that he didn't deserve it in that event and he was tactical and you can even though he finished fifth he finished fifth out of a really really elite bunch of athletes and in that event, that makes you think that Jeff Adler's got more to his game. Because as much as the CrossFit commentators were right in saying, maybe Adler could have pushed the pace. He saved it because he knew that his best lift was coming up. The deadlift was his best lift. And he, let's not forget, he PB'd his other two lifts and the deadlift. He PB'd all three and beat Matt Fraser. Like, that is something to be achieved. It was a very good weekend for Adler. You know, we saw him finish second. We saw him finish third. He had a first place in there. Uh, he was just up against, I will say, like he's just up against some really good competition. And he's st I'm sure we'll see him again at the CrossFit Games. Um, so I don't think it's the end for him. Uh, fifth on the women's side and rounding out the women's competition was Brooke Wells. Now, Brooke Wells, I felt like she made a couple of errors that kind of let her down this weekend, uh, like going out too hot, uh, especially on the first event where she, she picked up a fifth place finish. I think it was the Happy Star event. Yeah, she made a couple of mistakes and it kind of rem reminded me of Noah's performance. Like she went out really hot and aggressive and I think that's the stance she wanted to take, but she just lost it at the ends of workouts. Um, we saw it with the Happy Star workout where she was leading the race up until the final round and on that final set of thrusters that's where she lost it 
because she was putting down the bar and she was just gone, blown up massively. Now, that might have been a tactic to attack from the front and that's good if you can maintain it, but we saw it in the first event as well. She picked up fifth in the first in that first event um, with the shoulders to overheads. Just at the end, just that little bit of composure where maybe she went out too hot, maybe she went out too aggressive and ended up, instead of finishing second or third, she ended up finishing fifth and only getting 15 points. And that was the thing this weekend is for a lot of these athletes, a lower down finish, if you were trying to compete for a podium position, a lower down finish getting fourth or fifth in one event's not bad. If you're finishing there more than four or five times, you know, you're struggling a bit. But it was one of those weekends where the points gaps that you got could be made up easily if you were to have a good event and she just didn't quite have enough good events uh, this weekend let's not forget as well brooke actually finished second in the online competition to qualify for the crossfit games i'm sure we'll see her next year again another young female athlete she's not that old but we will see her i'm sure we'll see her again next year and hopefully we'll have a bigger field of athletes even though it was a fantastic competition well put on everything was well structured it was amazing to watch and of course we get a 2020 crossfit documentary out of it so everyone's a winner pretty much and that is the end of our video today thank you very much for watching if you have made it to the end please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe down below um i've been joel dench thank you